What's going on YouTube? It's Darian. I'm back with Darian the Dev. In this video, I just want to talk about my experience turning down my very first job in tech. And the reason why I think it's important to kind of share this story is because I think I learned a lot through this experience about being persistent with what you want, patience, and self-worth in just knowing your value. So I just wanted to make this video to really kind of just stress that um, and share my story, the, the experience that I had, and hopefully it'll help guide some newer developers out there who are on the job hunt right now or who are looking to get on the job hunt in the near future. So coming out of boot camp, we were all on the job hunt. It was a it was a pretty intense time. I mean, on top of just going to boot camp and you know, still having labs to do every single night or like like challenges that we had to do every single night and then being at class for 8 hours a day. You know, it was it was it was pretty it was pretty uh, intense. Basically, everyone was fighting for that that first opportunity to you know get to a job and get to an interview and do a code challenge and get offered that that extremely good developer salary that we hear so much about. So I ended up getting three job offers after applying to 47 jobs and interviewing with 11 of those jobs. Um, it boiled down to three companies. So the first company, during the interview, I stressed that I really wanted to grow as a developer. And this company actually used Java. So I stressed to them that I really wanted to continue on the path of learning that I was on from coding bootcamp, right? Which I think is, is pretty fair. You know, if you dedicate this much time, you know, 40, almost between 40 to 60 or more hours a week for 10 weeks straight right you give up your day job to be able to do this you know you it's a pretty serious commitment so um in the interview i was always vocal that i wanted to continue as a developer and continue to learn and be pushed and to be challenged and so they understood that but at the time you know they were a smaller company and at the time they were looking for specific roles within their company and so they're like, hey, we understand, you know, we think you will have great potential to be a developer here in the future, you know, but right now we need, you know, data analysts. So they needed a specific type of problem solver or a specific type of candidate to come in and fill this position. But essentially the entire thing involved moving hundreds of thousands of items from a spreadsheet like a, like a google spreadsheet or an excel sheet and transferring it into another one i wasn't super excited about that it wasn't something that i could really get behind it's not something that I, that would make me excited on my first day at work but again being fresh out of boot camp actually at this point i wasn't even out of boot camp yet i was still in boot camp when i was doing this particular interview yeah like like what do you say you're not really in a position to turn anything down they were kind of telling me that you know well in six months we you know you might be able to move over to our dev team or we just need to see how you continue to learn on your own or you know this and this and that but right now we really need these data analysts and things like that so I considered it, we went through the interview, everything went well, and uh, you know, a few days later, I got a phone call with an offer. Now, this offer actually was a salary paid position, and it was more than I had ever made before. It was more than I had ever been offered before. So, you know, it was extremely difficult to receive such a great offer, but not be offered what I had just spent the last 10 weeks committing myself to, committing myself to learning. Staying up late at night, struggling to get through certain things or the endless amount of hours that I spent trying to overcome certain hurdles on projects or whatever the case might be. And now they're asking me to pretty much shelve that and put that on the side to learn spreadsheets, which is something that I could have done way before 
boot camp. But with that being said, you know, I I told them I was excited about the offer, and these are just kind of my tips on how to, you know, decline an offer that might not be the best suit for you as a beginning engineer. You know, that that argument of, you know, your lack of experience is gonna come up at some point. Um, you know, they, they might wanna continue seeing how you learn um, code while you're at the job doing something that's non-code related they might want to see you building things in your free time and bring it to work or maybe they want to see you build tools in your free time that can help their internal team and then that gives them more of a incentive to push you over to the development team at least that was the case for me so i asked for a few days to uh continue weighing my options because i did have other interviews lined up so i was transparent about that so I guess one tip I would have is, you know, always be transparent. If you have other companies that you're entertaining, if you have other interviews lined up, I would definitely vocalize that before you just firmly commit to something and sign your name on a dotted line um, and get too far into the hiring process to where you're gonna waste your own time and the company's time, uh, especially if you're not 100% interested in, in that position or with that company. And so I asked for that, that time to, do the rest of my interviews and to make a firm decision and so they get they were fine with that i didn't have any more offers i didn't get another offer right away from another company but i just knew that i felt good enough about my ability to code i felt confident enough that I didn't need to do spreadsheets. I didn't need to be a data analyst. Un understanding that that was still my entry, my first entry job into the tech world, I didn't want to sacrifice everything I had just spent the last 10 weeks learning uh, just for a salary that was going to require me to do something that I was not excited about doing. That's not why I went to coding bootcamp. That's, that's not what I imagined myself doing. And so, uh, I called them back up and I told them that I respectfully declined their offer. And that's another thing too. Uh, my second tip would be to always, you know, be respectful in the decline of the job offer if it's not the best fit for you because it leaves a good impression with the company and they can always be a place of interest for you in the future. You know what I mean? You don't want to burn that bridge in case, you know, maybe you do want to go back and with once you get some more experience, maybe there is some aspect of that company that you do like and you could see yourself working there. It's just that maybe they're not looking for a role that you want right at that particular time. Maybe they'll open something like that up in the future. You just never know. So um, just, you know, I wouldn't be rude about how you turn it down because obviously these people believe in you enough uh, to bring you into the team. They think that you're gonna be a good fit for their company and they're investing their money into you. It was, it was hard though, you know, to turn, down, to turn down the biggest salary offer I'd ever received was uh, extremely difficult, but I just had to go out on a limb and this is where I say I learned a lot about self-worth and just believing in myself because at that point I realized like, hey, something better has to come along. And so I turned it down. Fast forward a few days, um, I ended up getting another interview with another company. They actually weren't hiring me or looking to hire me as a salaried employee. They were looking to hire me as a contract 1099 employee. So it came with more freedom in the sense that I could work remotely and work from home and there was no real like, like stringent like work culture or anything like that, like, or, or like rules. Um, it was very easy going. Um, however, it was a lot less certain for me, which was a big, big, big point in whatever company I went to was that financial security aspect. And so the 1099 thing wasn't super attractive to me because you just never know how much you're actually going to make. If that doesn't sound like too selfish, but I, I would just prefer to know how much money I can I can I can plan so that I can 
like budget around things and you know kind of just plan my life the same thing you know with that with that offer i had to again respectfully decline um so i guess that kind of leads to my third tip which was you know i always made sure to let them know to let the company or the employer know that there was nothing personal it was nothing that they did it was nothing that was wrong with their company it just was the fact that it, what they were looking for, what they needed at that time, didn't necessarily align with what was best for me. So I think that's a really key thing to, you know, let them know that there was there was no in particular thing about their company that just totally was a deal breaker for you, but more or less just the point where you are right now as an individual is not aligning with what they need as, you know, an employer. So. Uh, so I turned down the second job offer um, as well, um, even though that one was going to allow me to be a developer and they were actually hiring me as uh, actually a full stack engineer based on my portfolio. Again, it just all across the board, it just wasn't the, the best fit for me personally. I ended up, you know, getting the, the offer that I just received, which was far higher than everything that I turned down from a salary perspective. So I'm incredibly happy. I'm super excited about that. And I'm still a software engineer. Um, I'm gonna be learning a new language. So that's super exciting to just continue to grow. But all in all, turning down those opportunities that weren't the best fit ended up being a much better choice for me in the long run. And just having that patience to wait everything out until the best situation for me that felt right with me, that aligned with what I need in my life came across the table and just being persistent with knowing what you're looking for and not settling along the way and getting stuck in, you know, a not ideal situation and then possibly missing the ideal situation. Hopefully that helps somebody out there, man. Just some early stage software engineer advice for the newbies out there who might be anywhere from like one to three years into their development experience. Uh, I really hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If this helped you guys or was informal in any way, uh, please leave me some thumbs up, some likes. Go ahead and subscribe. It super, super helps me stay encouraged to make these videos and bring you guys content. Got tons of new stuff coming out on the way, so be sure to stay tuned and come back and check in and see how this journey continues to grow, you guys. I'm gonna keep sharing it with you. So again, thank you for watching. This is Darian, this is Darian the Dev, and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.